hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for having me today. Um, I'm so overwhelmed uh, being able to be here and um, seeing all my friends and uh, this lovely community that has blossomed over um, so many years. Uh, I'm here to, today to talk about um, a project uh, that I uh, built uh, with, with a team of people at uh, Burning Man last year called, um, a, you know, it's called a cloud machine. And um, what I really love about today is um, how uh, the community makes something and then comes out and talks about it. And my practice is um, really taking that kind of like maker um, um, element to it. So when I build something, I, I just love to share the process. And so a lot of what I'm talking about today is how we broke the project down and and um, um, how things were built. Uh, so my name is Adele, um, Adele Lin. Uh, I have uh, kind of poorly documented projects all over the place, um, mostly at these couple of websites. And also my code is um, uh, on my GitHub, also with the same name. Uh, yeah, so I'm a designer turned engineer. And uh, for my personal work, I love um, creating playful universes um, and environments and collaborating with people um, in a way where um, um, people can connect and learn something about themselves and each other. Uh, so some of the projects that I've uh, built in the past, uh, this one um, over here is a game called Star Catcher, where uh, you, you walk into a club, uh, field of stars, and you have some nets, and basically you catch stars. Um, project up there next to it um, is this notion of augmented reality um, amulets, but kind of using these amulets um, that hold um, your superpower and that gets um, visualized um, in, in AR. Uh, there's another project where I, I brought some unicorns to the desert. Um, down there is in Times Square uh, where we had a picnic with um, connected musical mushrooms. And um, the project uh, to the right of that is also another uh, musical uh, little village that I, I tried to build um, in Berlin a few years ago. Uh, and those two um, images on the far side uh, are the um, two other communities that I'm um, involved in. One is Code Liberation, where we teach women to code for games and creative um, endeavors. And then uh, that's NYC Resistor, uh, which is my beloved hackerspace in New York. Uh, yeah, so uh, this project is called Ethereal Fleeting. Uh, it was conceived by three artists in um, Switzerland, uh, Lucas, Itamar, and Bruce. Um, they helped me with a project a few years ago, and so when they, they, they told me about this project and asked if I'd love to be if I'd like to be involved, I was I was really excited. There were um, there were just so many things that I, I liked about this notion of um, uh, building a cloud canopy that that people could um, could hang out under. Uh, one thing is this notion of um, bringing the skies closer and help help us get closer to nature, um, and there was something very playful about this this idea that um, I, I wanted to engage with. Um, this is one of the larger, small projects that I've, I've uh, embarked on, um, kind of meaning I've worked on projects where it's involved two people up to like maybe 100 people, where um, someone's job is just to press the button that drops the curtain. Uh, and those you know, projects are of a totally different scale, where um, you might not even know half the functions of, of the other people um, on the team. Uh, so this was a project maybe about 10 people, and. Um, and so it's a, ni a nice scale to kind of talk about. So um, I want to talk about a few things about how you collaborate with um, people across different um, parts of the world, um, how you break down a project that has a physical build as well as um, some digital elements, and um, also some of the specifics um, about pro programmable um, effects. Uh, so this was a really interesting collaboration because I was in uh, San Francisco on the on the West Coast and um, I had a collaborator in New York and then um, also the guys were in Switzerland and Paris. So most of our meetings were me holding a coffee cup and, and they were holding beers. Uh, so, you know, it's a very different dynamic there. And also um, physical geography can um, dictate the roles uh, that you end up taking with the project. So I wasn't physically able to be part of the building prototypes. So I, I took on the role of um, coding and, and some of the electronics. So the project had um, a pretty quick timeline. Um, this we, we knew about the funding in February, but then things only really started going in July. And we 
we're going to do our first build in um, first sort of build with everybody on site a month after that. And then um, the project had to be up at the end of August. So a lot of time was spent before that, mainly um, scheduling and thinking about documentation and communicating and figuring out how to communicate over the internet. So there was a lot of uh, visual um, uh, visual assets that were being built. So some were um, more around the physical build, what, what that was going to look like, um, rendering, trying to get the proposal, and, um, and early prototypes where we started with wood and, and it ended up being kind of using uh, metal in the end. So the, the system involved uh, a few of these towers um, that they were all going to be networked together with uh, Ethernet. Um, cat five and uh, so you had the main tower which had also the brain elements um, which had a raspberry pi uh, a switch um, it was going to have some sensors in it which we didn't end up being able to incorporate and then uh, you had all these nodes which were uh, consisting of microcontrollers we used um, teensies which are a really great um, uh, little controller that uh, could pass through um, the different types of messaging to um, the lighting, um, to the fog machines that we ended up using, um, and different uh, other floodlights and things like that. So this, this for me, since I wasn't, um, since I wasn't the uh, final kind of, um, I was trying to realize um, uh, somebody's vision. This was a really nice opportunity for me to think about how can I build something that uh, somebody else could then use to build with. And so it was kind of thinking about how do you make a playground uh, for someone, uh, a coding playground for someone to play with um, in two to three days when we were all gonna get together. So a lot of my thinking around it was um, developing for another developer, which is um, interesting for me. So it's um, kind of thinking through a few different types of systems and this was kind of the one that we ended up going through, uh, going with. Uh, where we had all the different types of patterns and uh, effects that we wanted, um, thinking through the pixel mapping, um, and then how we were then going to pass on those messages um, and passing all the data out through to all the other um, controllers. Um, so we ended up using, so um, with this kind of work, um, if um, uh, many of you who engage with this know that there are other tools um, that you can use, uh, like Max MSP, Touch Designer, um, you know, doing it straight with uh, Python. Um, but we ended up going with processing, and um, it was, uh, there are many reasons why, and one of it was like, it's a really great collaborative tool. Um, and the other thing I love about it is it's totally cross-platform. So we were able to, um, each of us develop in our own environments, Mac and Windows, and then we were able to put on a Linux machine and have it um, you know, sit out there for a week and, and it, it just ran perfectly. So um, you know, when, you're, when you're thinking through these sorts of projects, thinking, you know, thinking about what kind of hardware are you gonna have, like an expensive machine with a GPU, or you know, is it gonna be on a little embedded computer, and you know, kind of think through. Uh, what environment you want to build um, your, your projects in. Uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, so um, another peculiarity of uh, using, um, of doing kind of lighting control is there's a, there's a few different protocols. Um, there's one called Open Sound Control OSC um, and um, Artnet uh, DMX, which is more for artists. Um, there are different protocols that architectural lighting uses, but these, these are generally the ones that you um, you would be working with for art projects. And um, so um, Artnet is this, um, it's kind of like a distribution system that um, sends out DMX data. And um, getting to understand that at, at the beginning was a really tricky thing because you have these idea of universes which have um, channels in them. So um, a universe will have 512 channels which when you split them up to RGB, gives you 170.67 LEDs, which also doesn't really make sense. Um, so we had 7,200 LEDs, and then you had to think about how to split that into chunks of 512. Uh, so we ended up thinking through and, and working out some math, and we used less than the 512 channels. Um, and so just kind of have to get um, used to that if you're if you're going to be using this for your project. Uh, and then the other um, concept that um, 
here is this notion of a pixel map. So you, where you, um, so the top is actually the design or the kind of like the, the way the patterns were going to be laid out on the different towers and structures, but then how you send that out on a, uh, on your DMX universes is kind of like the pixel map. And because there wasn't enough channels on one to send out the whole message, so I ended up having to chop it in half. And um, so that's kind of what it, what it looks like there. Uh, so this is early prototyping, um, just kind of using um, one of the basic processing sketches and, and using the ArtNet library to send that out. So I was testing on a single LED strip. And then I would send that code over to, um, to uh, Paris where they would test on, um, I think, 15 of them. Uh, so one of the main things was thinking about um, efficiency. Uh, once you start going up to a lot of um, strips, there's um, a lot of, we, we dropped a lot of frames. And so some of the things that helped were um, not to draw to the screen. Drawing to the screen takes up a lot of memory. And so I had to uh, you know, change all my code to write directly to the pixel buffer and just have like um, a tiny um, a drawing on screen just to show people what was going on. Um, and, uh, and then we finally, finally, like a month, uh, two weeks before well, we were going out, we got to think about the fun stuff and how do you design for drama. And uh, in this situation, there was um, a lot of clocks involved. So um, thinking about um, each of the, the clouds being like a poof event, and those got clustered into fog events um, and timing those. And then leading up to a fog event, you would have like these lighting, pat uh, I designed these lighting patterns that would um, um, lead up to it. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, this video of the, the final results. Um, it's really hard to film LEDs, as many of you will know, but you can see there's a little creeping pattern that goes up um, the sticks, and then you get this, this, this nice poof. Um, yeah, um, so uh, anyway, I think I'm actually out of time, but um, thank you, thank you so much. And, And uh, yeah, if you're interested in looking at the code, um, you can just check that out on, on the GitHub and, and let me know if you have any questions or, or building any similar projects. Thank you. <laughs>